And our title this morning is Do Not Grumble As Some of Them Did. Do Not Grumble As Some of Them Did. And we will begin our June 1st Saturday John Prayer Word. We have read a lot about this in the Bible, and it is Israel's exodus out of Egypt and into the wilderness journey they went. And this is also reiterated in Acts 7, 38. In this verse, it describes their time in the wilderness as our church life today. However, the Bible reveals that the reason why the entire first generation were destroyed in the wilderness and could not set foot in the land of Canaan was because they grumbled against God. They all died except Joshua and Caleb. And why was this? Why did they die? It is because they grumbled against God and they complained. In Numbers 1427, it says, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who are grumbling against me? I have heard the complaints of the sons of Israel, which they are making against me. So in the wilderness journey, they committed many sins. But the one that God truly points out is this grumbling, this complaining. And Numbers 14, 29 through 30 says, Your corpses shall fall into fall in this wilderness, even all your numbered men, according to your complete number from 20 years old and upward, who have grumbled against me. Surely you shall not come into the land in which I swore to settle you, except Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. Inside Canaan, only Caleb and Joshua from the first generation went in. And why did the others die? Because of their grumbling. Their grumbling. That is why they died in the wilderness. During their 40 years in the desert or the wilderness, the details of their grumbling and complaints are as follows. And let us look at them. Number one. At the fourth campsite, Mara, they grumbled because there was no water. And this is found in Exodus 15, verses 23 through 24. But we know and we can understand why they grumbled. Because if you don't drink water, you will die, especially in the desert. So God understood this, and he turned the bitter waters of Mara into sweet water and gave it to them. So this grumbling, God understood, and he gave them what they needed. And number two, at the seventh campsite, the wilderness of sin, the people grumbled because of lack of food. Exodus 16, verses 2 and 3. And even this, God understood their grumbling because the Israelites wanted food. So God gave the Israelites the food from heaven, manna, and he covered their grumbling with his love. Number three, at the 12th campsite, Kibroth Hatava. This time, they grumbled because they wanted to eat meat. They didn't want to eat this detestable manna anymore, as they said. Numbers 11.4 And what did God do? He even understood this. And he piled up quail around them from all sides so they can eat meat. Number four, Tabara. This is not a campsite, but it was a place, Tabara. This is the place where they passed through, which was between the 11th campsite, the wilderness of Sinai, and the 12th campsite, Kibroth Hatava. And they grumbled against God here. And this is found in Numbers 11.1. 1. 
So as we listen to this, we must understand that the different types of grumblings people give to God, water, food, meat, this is all found in Numbers 11.1, 1, the way they grumbled against God. Early, earlier, when they were in the wilderness of Sinai, they complained to God for killing the idolaters who made the golden calf idol and worshipped it. And these people even dare speak evil words against God. You see here that the grumbling got worse and worse. Number five, the 14th campsite, Rimna, Rimna. Here they grumbled again after sending out their spies to Canaan. And they did this after hearing the bad report of the 10 spies. And this is found in Numbers 14, verses 2 and 3. Number six, between the 14th campsite, Rimna, and the 32nd campsite, Kadesh, the Korahites resented Aaron's coveted position as high priest. This is in number 16, 11. So all things were recovered. They were taken care of. So now what happens? Korah, who was a descendant of Koath, like Aaron, complained about the priesthood belonging to Aaron's household. See, Korah also wanted to be a part of the priesthood, so he complained and grumbled against Aaron and his household. Number seven, they again blame God for destroying Korah. Last time they blamed God for killing those who worshiped the idol calf, and now they blame God for killing Korah and his family. Numbers 16, 41. After Korah and the rebellious 250 people who followed him in burning unauthorized incense, after they did this, God destroyed them. And then the first generation again complained that Moses and Aaron had killed them. This shows them that they did not accept God's justice. They should have seen that because they burned unauthorized incense, that they deserved punishment, but they grumbled against this as well. Throughout their 40 years in the wilderness, the Israelites constantly complained and grumbled against God. Why does the Bible record their resentment, their grumbling, their complaints in such detail? And why is it recorded so many times, so delicately? It is because they resemble who we are today. When we live in this world, we commit sin, but the worst sin we can give against God is grumbling and complaining. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now remember, this is a lesson for us. It says, now these things happen to them as an example, and they were written for our instruction, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. 1 Corinthians 10, 11 tells all these things happen to them because it's a warning for us. So then, how do we stop this sin of complaining and grumbling, the sin that God hates so much? Number one, we must always confess that it is not I who is working, but God who is working in me. Philippians 2, verses 13 and 14. 
For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. So when do you grumble and dispute? When you say, I'm doing this, either whether it's at work, at church, or at, in your business, you have to say, God is in me helping me. You cannot say you are doing, because when you do, you will grumble, you will dispute others, and you will complain against God. Number two, how do we stop complaining and grumbling? Number two, we must always keep in mind that complaining is directly related to our judgment. As soon as we complain and grumble, we're going to get judged. Remember that. James 5.9 Do not complain, brethren, against one another, that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. So how can we stop complaining? By knowing that God's right in front of us about to judge us for our complaints. Then we won't complain when we know we could be judged by it. Number three, treat one another well and strive to serve one another and the church. So together, Treat each other well. Work together well. 1 Peter 4, verses 9 and 10. Be hospitable to one another without complaint. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Instead of complaining or grumbling while you work, saying, why am I the only one doing this? Don't say that. Instead, say, I will do it since these are the gifts and talents God gave me, and I will do it since I am helping God and His people. So serve the church with the heart that treats others the way you want to be treated. If you don't want to receive judgment, then don't complain and grumble. Please remember this. Number four. We have to endure even through discouragement and the darkness within us without giving it back to others. So even inside of us, there is discouragement and frustration. Don't vocalize this with your lips. And then God will change your heart into a comforted heart. Jude 1.16, it says, These, which are the ungodly ones, Prophesied by Enoch, the seventh generation of Adam, are grumblers. These, finding fault, following after their own lusts, they speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. So these people are the ungodly ones prophesied by Enoch, who was the seventh generation of Adam. Enoch prophesied against the grumblers. And in the end, they were all destroyed by the judgment of the flood in the time of Noah. This is the conclusion of our message today. Believe that when complaints and grumbling disappear from your life, like Joshua and Caleb, then the land of Canaan, which is the kingdom of heaven, will be your inheritance as well. This is what God is showing us today. The reason why Joshua and Caleb could enter the kingdom of heaven, Canaan, was because they didn't grumble and complain against God. So let us not be those who complain and grumble, even about the little things, but instead let us truly be grateful for the little things, as well as the big things, so that we can pass through this difficult path of our wilderness journey and finally enter true rest and comfort in heaven. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us once again raise our hands 
and begin this first day of June in this first moment of the day, giving thanksgiving to our Father God. Let us say Amen, Hallelujah. Amen, Hallelujah. Amen, Hallelujah. Amen, Hallelujah.